Let me also take advantage. Nice, so mm. you, you, think, you said youth in garment, eh? Yeah, youth in garment. Okay. Mm. Well, she's not youth in garment, though. Had been doing this for the, the now coffee. <laughs> well, so um, because Galamsey has now become topical, we wanted to end the week in introspection. So we're recalling that massive report by the head of the Interministerial Committee on Mining, Professor Frimpon Boating. Now, it landed him in trouble. But that report, as we are going to revisit it, gave us a lot of introspection, but perspective on what he faced and all the various ministries faced and the Secretariat as a committee in the daunting tax as it is now to be able to nib in the bad gallum sea because now the waters are now creamy. It's like having tea and milk mis mi mixed together. So let's recall this incident. How difficult it was for Professor Frimpon Boateng to pen that report. That stayed apparently over two years on the decks of the, of the Chief of Staff at the Presidency. The President has ordered some investigations. Let's respect uh, his orders and move on and see how we can bring this under control. But, but do you still stand by all the details in that report? Oh, yes. You stand by them? Yes. Regardless of the, the uh, defense by some of the people who have been captured in that report, that what you are saying is not true? No, see, uh, uh, it wasn't an easy thing writing about some of my colleagues. It wasn't easy. But I have to be brutally honest with the president. Mm. And that is why I did what I did. So that I could have said, oh, Mr. President, everything is OK. You're under control. Maybe give me time. We're able to do it. Write some wishy-washy thing. And then not achieve anything. But I had to be honest with myself. And knowing the president the way he is, he wanted the truth. True sure, indeed. Uh, and I did that from my point of view. The former member of parliament for Manson Quanta Constituency, for instance, whom you said that uh, owns multiple dozens of, of concessions uh, while he was a member of the Minerals Commission Board, sold it out to some individuals for 200,000 CDs each. He says that he doesn't even own even one concession. He's ready to take you on in court. He's free to do that. I'm waiting for it. You're waiting for him to go to court? Yes. You, you have evidence to back the fact that he... he, he I am waiting for him. And because we are doing a recollection of that report, that will give us an insight. Let me just give you some quotes from that report. He says, throughout our struggle with illegalities in the small-scale mining sector, what baffled me was the total disregard of the president's commitment to protecting the environment. And this is quoted verbatim or taking verbatim from the report. He says, I can state without any equivocation that many party officials from the national to the unit committee level had their friends, personal assistants, agents, relatives, financiers, or relatives also engaged in illegal mining. Most of them engaged Chinese working for them. I'm not referring to the party people who had their legitimate concession and were mining sustainably as they were instructed to do. These are appointees in the Jubilee House that are doing or supporting illegal mining or interfering with the fight against the menace. Now, Professor Frimpon Boatin, you take a critical look at that report, then indicts not only the presidency, but key people who apparently were supposed to be in positions of authority and just did not take the right decisions, but were also involved in this process. Now, we'll show you pictures of how the waters look now. You, you've seen that they've been trending. Lawyer Afuakwa, you take a look at this report and how the state of the waters are. The Ghana Water Company insisting, now they even have to close shop for some of their treatment plants. Metals are in the water, even if treated, that are given to normal Ghanaians could have medium to long-term effect on their organs and their health. This is a public health issue. What do you make of all this? Yeah, let me say a very good morning to yourself and to uh, my, my, my co-panelists and seniors on this platform. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Then extend the greetings of His Excellency the President to the good people of Ghana. 
and that of his vice president, who is also the president in waiting, Alaji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. I believe he represents the future of our country. And certainly, uh, the bold solutions that he has proposed when elected as president will be able to help propel our country into the fourth industrial revolution that we are all clamoring for. <clears throat> Indeed, he's on his campaign tour, interacting with the good people of this country, and sharing with them his manifesto promises. And I believe the Ghanaian people are buying in, and certainly they will give him the mandate. Roland, on the issue of uh, illegal mining and the pollution of our water bodies, Oh, wow. you are so, why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> Uncle is too staring at me. <clears throat> On the issue of the illegal mining <clears throat> and the pollution of our water bodies, I believe that um, successive governments in the past, from uh, the late Jerry John Rawlings' era, started the fight against these minutes as far back as the late 1980s, after the passage of the uh, small-scale uh, uh, mining laws in 1989. In 2006, another fight during the presidency of His Excellency General Jacob Kufour ensued, where even in 2008, in the UN General Assembly, um, some human rights violations as a result of the fight against illegal mining in that regard were part of the human rights reports that were presented um, during the UN sitting in 2008. In 2013, at the height of uh, the foreign invasion, of our, our lands, as far as illegal mining were concerned, President Mohammed's uh, presidency also established the Interministerial Committee, where lights another military operation <clears throat> also ensued, with um, the arrest and deportation of thousands of Chinese miners. Subsequently, in 2015-2016, it became an albatross again, where lights in 2017, the media coalition against illegal mining and the lights also ensued with massive advocacy against this minute, which has become an albatross on the neck of all of us as, as a people. We believe that the environment in which the land on which we sit now belongs to the living, it belongs to the dead, and it belongs to the, the those who yet believe. unborn. Yeah, to everybody. All lawyers believe that the land on which we okay. live in is, 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 is not We're ours. discussing the Professor from Pombo report. I'm coming there. <clears throat> I'm coming there. I'm only laying a foundation as to what the menace of illegal mining are and the efforts so that you took us to Rollins. The efforts that have been played by successive governments. So it is not a new thing now. It is something that has existed. But in the Fourth Republic, if you are looking at the fight against illegal mining and the, um, the establishment of a political war to be able to fight this menace, President Akufuado demonstrated that to the good people of Ghana in, tw in uh, is it 2017 or 2018 where he placed a moratorium on all forms of small-scale mining in the, in the country and placed his presidency on the line. With a moratorium lasting for almost about two years, you know that uh, the, issue of illegal, the issue of mining <clears throat> has its economic impact, it has its social impact, and it has its uh, environmental impact. Mm -hmm. When the moratorium was placed on all forms of small-scale mining, be it it's legal or illegal mining, to be able to reform or restructure the sector for sanity to prevail, a lot, a lot of people lost their livelihoods. A lot of people lost their capital. A lot of people lost their assets. And as a result, you believe that in 2020, the New Patriotic Party lost or, or, or saw a dwindle in votes as far as most of the mining constituencies in the mining regions of Ghana were concerned. And this was eminent through the, the, the dexterity of the president, where he placed his, political, he placed his presidency on the What's line your in point the fight with against the illegal losing mining. of votes. I'm coming there. In the fight against illegal mining, like I rightly mentioned, it is a livelihood matter. Once it has existed for quite a long time, it becomes, when something exists for a long time, it becomes, it, it becomes more or less like a norm. So attacking it with the full force of um, the security, in a securitized way where a, a, a military operation was sanctioned, <clears throat> Operation Vanguard, Operation Halt, um, Vanguard 1, Vanguard 2, Operation Halt 1, Halt 2, and the Red became so enormous in our country as a regard of safeguarding our environment. At the point, our water started seeing some level of um, improvement because during, during, during the moratorium period, we could see most of our water bodies regenerating mm. and the turbidity levels dropping. It is true because I have conducted some researches in this sector where you could see that as a result of mining um, some buried 
um, heavy metals get leached into uh, most water bodies, and as a result, some heavy metal contamination in some water bodies gets uh, 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 risen. And you can see uh, lead, cadmium, molybdenum, arsenic, iron, and those kind of things. If you assess some water bodies, you could see the levels of at which some of these are. Because naturally, they are buried underground within the soils. So once it is brought up and it gets leached into these water bodies, it becomes... Is this so to the foundation you are laying? I'm laying the foundation for it. It's, it's a topic, say we are going retrospect of the Frimpo Boatins report. And subsequently, an intermediate committee was formed by President Kufara to be able to manage this minute. And whilst man managing this minute, what your time? Whilst, Please, managing, whilst managing this minute, um, at the point, Professor Fimpo Bati came out with his own personal opinion or report as to the, the whole matter. And this report was not a report in the entirety as a result of the Interministerial Committee. It was his personal writings and those kind. Granted that this is a report of the Interministerial Are you committee. saying that as, as the head of the Interministerial Committee mm. and the sector minister, mm. his report was not an official report? When you mention interministerial, you are committee, saying it is his personal report. Yes, it is. It was his personal report because interministerial committee means that it's an amalgamation of se uh, several ministries, and at the end of the day, the report must reflect the totality of all the ministries or sector ministers that were put together to be able to manage this mandate. But this report does not have signatures. What do you make of some of the of utterances that were, or, or some of the comments that were made in that report, some of the indicting key officials of government to the extent that even the president was caught in the web? Some key, some key government appointees. Questioning were his commitment. Some key government appointees were mentioned to be complicit in the uh, in the menace of illegal mining, and you believe some of these matters are before the courts. Um, Professor from Paul Barton was received by some of these members who were named in this uh, in, in this report or in this opinion that he put out, and these matters are before the courts, and we cannot go into the totality of these matters. Some members, some names were mentioned, including both uh, members within the, the National Democratic Congress and members within the New Patriotic Party were mentioned as complicit because of this whole enterprise in, in this regard. And granted, uh, Roland, our waters regenerated. Currently, the waters are back. You could see some of the waters so in a devastated situation, the Pra and Cobra and the likes. You could see the turbidity levels rising. And what can we do as a country is what's... Uh, is before all of us for us to interrogate and all find solutions to it because the reason I enumerated the military interventions or the security interventions in this fight was that as far back as 1989, this militarization within the sector to, to be able to sanitize the sector started. But we have not been able to find solution to illegal mining menace as of today. Although it gives us some level of improvement, it, it, later we just revert back to the old ways because these people, once the military operation ends, the people go back to the site and begin to also uh, do what they, they used to do again. Granted, both political parties have put out manifestos. The manifesto promises. What is in these manifesto promises that will help us eradicate this uh, uh, canker for the benefit of the people of Ghana? Dr. Baumia is proposing that he could see that the only weakness uh, between the fight against Galamse and the operations of Galamse in Ghana is that for Ghanaians to be able to own the natural resource that we have, we need to put up a natural resource bank where the natural resource bank will be able to inject capital in supporting our people who are uh, uh, participating in okay, this. We'll come, we'll come back to what the parties are doing. So just hold, hold the fort there. Oh, uh, and, let me no, 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 you will not land, sir. Uh, you, you've used eight minutes to lay the foundation. So now we'll, we'll talk about, I mean, going for what we can do, picking a cue from the Professor Frank Pom. These are critical issues. To the point that even the Ghana Water Company, regional, I have to say, office of the Ghana Water, uh, the Ghana Water Company, Ashanti Regional Office, says that they are even seeing turbidity levels in excess of over 50,000. Ideally, they should just get to about 10, 11,000, they're fine. And to the extent that we have human lives at stake, would you say that taking a cue from what the content of the Professor from Pomboating's reports are, perhaps if we had acted steadfastly, we wouldn't have been where we are. And so the president has failed totally. Uh, so let me wish your lovely viewers a good morning. Wish yourself a good morning. Wish my <coughs> co panelists a, 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 a good morning. Good morning. Uh, hopefully, our sole consideration in this discussion should be Ghana. Mm. And Ghanaians need to understand that under no circumstance must they place their political party over Ghana. Mm. Because what is at stake with this Galamse issue 
is the very existence or the very suitability of this territory that we are, we call our home. Mm. You understand? For our existence. Because when you when 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 you attack the ecology, the ecosystem, and you make it poisonous, then you're attacking our lives, not our livelihoods. You see, and, and see, and this problem, nobody should be afraid. As in, there's only one person we should, whose head we should hold. Who is that? The president. There's only one person not about trying to be too technical for nothing. Because you see... Well, there's Rollins, at least there's a historical perspective. Listen, 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 in 2016, 7 December, Ghanaians told President Mahama that we feel that you have not dispensed with your job. And so we sat him. We gave him 44%. And then we voted Nanado as our president. And we gave him all the constitution. <laughs> in fact, the people of Ghana gave him a clear job to do with clear terms of reference. Article 275 of our constitution, is it, uh, 257, 257. Right. 257 of our constitution says that every mineral mm. in this natural state, mm. every mineral in this natural state is for the Republic of Ghana. Mm. And the president shall hold those resources in trust for and on behalf of the people of this country. That's the law. Simplicity. Simple. Now the question is that so, the president, or a trust has been created in the president. What kind of responsibility, what kind of obligation, what kind of burden has this trust placed on the president? And how has it dispensed with the, those obligations that have been placed on him? You see, there are so many duties that a trust places on you, as in where if you are created as a trustee. Fundamental to your job is, is, is in you, having what we call a fiduciary duty. So that means that when you are handling the trust property, your sole consideration is to act in a manner that's entirely in the best interest of the beneficiaries. Mm. And two, where a trust has been created in you, there is your duty to protect the property. The property in, 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 that, that has been created uh, in, uh, 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 as a trust. Now when we say Galam, say what is Galam say? Galamse is simply, technically, mining in a manner or mining without licenses. Or where, even where you have been given a license, you are mining outside of the scope or authority of that license. That's simply Galamse. There's a reason why in Ghana, when you want to mine, the president grants you a concession. Also, we need to understand that what any minister is acting, really, is the president acting. On so behalf. Is the president acting? You understand? So if the minister is acting in a manner which is adverse to the powers we give to you, the president, it's your duty, is your obligation as the president of this country to call the minister out, indeed, to sack the minister. You know, there's a reason why, so when the minister, even though the, even, so when the minister of lands and natural resources grants the concession, really is the president granting the concession in exercise of his legal rights over the minerals of this country. But where those concessions are granted, it should solely be to the benefit of we, the beneficiaries. Now, when you read uh, 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 Prof. Frimpon's Martin's report, one thing is clear. One thing is clear. The, we have a president who slept on his job. In spite of the oath he took, the oath to be faithful to Ghana, he slept on his job. Why, why am I saying that, that? You see, when you understand sustainable development and, and the need for us to, uh, 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 as we've preserve a forest. And, 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 and there's a reason why ordinarily you, you must not mine or align mining in forest reserves. Now, per the report, per the, uh, Prof. Frimpo was saying that in 2018, the president gave clear instructions to the his minister, mm. ban all mining activities in the forest reserves. 2018? Yeah, per the report. Contrary to those clear instructions, the minister gave concessions to people to go and mine in the forest reserve. What did the president do? Roland, you, you, are, you have information. What, 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 what did the president do? He says he put his presidency on the line. Yeah, but when he gave clear instructions, he, 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 he slept. Also, when Prof. Pompo, you see, sometimes 
Um, and, and my brother here is saying that, as in technically, it is his personal report. You granted it is your technical report, but let's say you are you are the trustee. Your duty is to protect the minerals. Your duty is to protect the environmental integrity of this country. And your minister in charge of the environment, the chairman of your interministerial committee in mining, comes and tells you that the president, in front of Sir John, so it's not as if he came to look for concern, that this Sir John is the biggest threat to the integrity of our environment. What the president do about it? Indeed, when this comprehensive report was granted to you, the president, a report that was trying to explain to you why not only the fight against Ghana State being lost, but why our environmental integrity or why our environment was being decimated. Mm? To the extent that we all know, and the president ought to know, that when your environment is gone, then you are putting all of our lives at peril. What did the president do? He sat on the report for two years. He sat on the report for two years. So clearly, you have a president who, even though he took an oath, he took an oath to be faithful to Ghana. That meant that he was going to be faithful to his obligations under our constitution. He slept. That despite all the fine words I'll put my president on the line, he slept. He showed absolutely no commitment to his obligations. He took an oath also that he's going to dedicate himself to the well-being of every single guy. He took that oath. Now you have a situation where because of his his crime of sleeping on this job, you understand, in serving as a trustee in respect of our environment, because of his slumber, deliberate slumber, you have a situation where all of our lives are in peril. Now, you know something about gold. You know they use mercury to... You know, now they're using cyanide. Cyanide, arsenic, mercury, mm, lead. Mm, mm. Now, basic chemistry and biology will tell you that when mercury gets into your system, when it gets into your system, it would take more than a year for it to be excreted. And, and there's something we call mercury poisoning. You see, when mercury gets into, mercury can seep into the, the, the food, because the same areas are also areas where we get a lot of food. So who knows? We may be eating mercury leading food. So, so because of what is at stake, Roland, and because of the oath he took, and because of the extent to which he's reneged on his duties, I'm calling on the president. Then the same oath he took, in the same oath he took, he said that should he fail to fulfill any of his obligations under that oath, then he's going to submit himself to the laws of Ghana and suffer pain. I'm calling on the president. If he loves his country, if he respects the constitution, if he understands service, he should submit himself to the oath because he failed. He has breached the oath he took. And Ghana should wake up because we are the repositories of real power and call on the president to fulfill the terms of the oath he took to submit himself to the laws of Ghana should he, should he breach any of the oath. All right. Now, now, now Philip, at the end of the, you take a critical look at some contents of the report where it indicts key people at the party hierarchy yes. down to even the local government level. Yes. That is something, uh, well... Governance experts would say the president should have acted upon, Absolutely. irrespective of, especially knowing that it's coming from the sector minister, Professor from Pombwati. Absolutely. I think that the president sees crime and then chooses to close his ears, close his eyes, close his mouth against that. He's a thy in the wool member of the criminal cabal. That I inflict you cannot on make those conclusions. Otherwise, what other conclusion can I make? A president has sat down and allowed babies with cleft lips in mining communities. A president that's presided over a regime where people are dying at Kolebu because of dialysis machine failures. A president that's presided over the increase of cancer for your citizens. And you say we should salute you this morning. We condemn you, Mr. President. You are a failure. You have disappointed the people of this country. We owe you no apology. You owe the people of this country an apology. Step down, Mr. President. Let's speak to the report. Step down, Akufadu and Baumia. You have failed us. At the core of this is that Article 88 of the Constitution, if you'd indulge me, let me talk about it. The President has entrusted the Attorney General with the prosecutorial powers of state. And if I would read, the President can directly instruct the Attorney General to go on and prosecute. There are several instances of the complicity of members of this MPP government. In instances of illegal galamse, mining in excess of the scope allowed, mining in forest reserves, and the President yet cannot order his Attorney General to prosecute. 
and yet we tell his attorney general to go and prosecute an innocent man? What kind of man is this? Is this a man that has lived under the false facade as a human rights lawyer? Human rights lawyer who sits down today and allows the people of his country to die. Akufa, they have failed us. Only this morning I saw a report by uh, the fourth estate. The fourth estate's report is very damning. I have seen that since the passage of LI 2462, we have members of this NPP government who are still going into forest reserves to mine irresponsibly. Mr. President, are you aware of that or not? Sam Pine, Mayor of Kumasi, former uh, General Secretary of the NPP in Ashanti, has a company that has been given a mining lease till 2050 something to mine in a forest reserve. But Mr. Kufado. Well, somebody will say that's a lease. It's been granted in recourse to law. The fact of the matter is that the forest must be protected. Now they have mined in the water bodies and they are now attacking the forest. How greedy can you get as a government? How greedy can you get? You have finished pulling the water. You have finished mining on roads. You have finished mining in people's homes. Now it is the forest. How come there will not be floods in Ghana? How come it won't be the case that rains don't fall in the north? These are all the ripple effects of the failed leadership of Alaji Baumia and Akufuadu. The fact of the matter is that when you go and mine in forest reserves, you have a duty to reclaim, at least with a specific example of Akunta mining. They don't reclaim the lands. It may be a lease, but there's an added responsibility of ensuring that you reclaim lands. Tell me instances where people that have ripped the environment have reclaimed lands. They don't. Let me say this. Akufuadu should learn something from Minshia. Akufuadu should learn the example of Nana Santehene. Nana Santehene is on record to have held, at least just recently, two of his sub-chiefs were distilled. This Akufuadu and Baumia have sat down and consent and allowed members of their government. You see, even So you are saying because they are Santehene... Uh, uh, he took out his chiefs. So because of their complicity in Galamsi. Okay. Their complicity in Galamsi. That is leadership. If you are the head, you must make sure that those that are your subjects, those that follow you, Lead by your example. If there's failure by your followers, you are a failure as a leader. Mm -hmm. And everything you see happening in this MPP government is because Akufado is a rotten fish head. Absolutely rotten fish head. The neck, which is Baumia, is even cut off. <laughs> it cannot support the head. Failed government. And that's why we have DCs, political party appointees, mining left, right, and center, and then causing mayhem. I come from rural Ghana. I speak about this with so much passion because I come from one of the most deprived parts of this country. I know what it feels like to wake up without food. I know what it feels like when the rain doesn't fall and you can't cultivate millet or rice or maize to feed your family. President Akufuado has that benefit of giving his daughter $34 million contracts. He has that benefit of presiding over a government where his family, Ken Oforiata, is benefiting from the bonds of Ghana. He has the privilege of making sure that his nephew, or is it his cousin, Gabby, is benefiting, his law firm is benefiting from major contracts of this government. Well, Why must that him. be the case? At the expense of the mass of our people, at the expense of the poor child from Bunkurgo or Nakpanduri, at the expense of the poor child from Asinfosu, we take strong exception to the negligent leadership of Akufuadu. He must step aside. There are several examples of MPP appointees. There's a specific example of the DC for Wasa East, Emmanuel Boachi. What did the they do DC to you? of Wasa is Emmanuel Bachi. The MPP Deputy Western Regional Women's Organizer, they have set up a company called Wasa Mining Limited. They are mining the forest reserve. They are depleting the forest reserve. And they are not reclaiming it. And yet Akufuado sits down and does nothing at the top and does nothing. The people of Ghana should realize one thing President Mahama said. And that's the fact that he's going to appoint an attorney general that truly means justice. An we'll, attorney general, that will come to the way forward. And call we'll crime come to the way crime. forward. I, I think that will be the last wrap of our discussion. But, uh, at the end of the day, we know that there are key issues that have been raised in the report. Individuals have been named. Now, if you look at the phenomenon where this report is leaked, and several months after, we still have the rampant, indiscriminate Galamse activities taking place to the point that it is now at the peril of the lives of ordinary citizens. And now we will have to wait till an election is conducted, a manifesto promise is implemented before we, we rid the rivers of this kanker. What does it tell you about the, the present clear danger issues that need to be dealt with that are not being dealt with? Ajigong, mm -hmm. 
Aje go. Aje go. Good morning to our viewers and good morning to my fellow panelists. Yeah, the morning. point that you make, the threat of Galamse, is not today. Is it today? The president, is he still the commander in chief? Is he? Yes. If he feels he cannot do the commander in chief's work, he should put it down and leave. It's just four months. He can leave before then. Why do I say that? Galam say, is it not uh, a, a, a war? Huh? Is it not a war? Are we not fighting a war where Galam say is concerned, Roland? Hmm? Are we fighting a war? Huh? And we can call it a war because of what? The UN General Assembly's resolutions, hmm? where it states, and let me read. Rome Statute 1998 considers attacks on civil objects, including water infrastructure, as war crimes. It's a war. And if it's a war, the commander-in-chief is supposed to take control. Let's give it to President Akufuado. Hmm? When this thing started, he put in place certain uh, institutions. There was the total ban on uh, illegal mining. There was Operation Vanguard, Operation mm. Halt, one and two, community mining schemes, Galam Stop Tax Force, NLIP, and the Youth in Afforestation Program. Was it able to do anything? At the time they worked. Mm -hmm. You didn't see the drones. Mm -hmm. What happened? So just on the ground. Why is it still, why are we still going through Galam? See? And why are the young people flooding to Galamsey uh, 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 points, areas? Why? The one thing the president hasn't been able to do, the president and his government hasn't been able to do, is create jobs. Simple. Simplicita. He hasn't been able to create jobs for the youth. 2.1 million or 2.3 million jobs created. Prove it. Prove it. We talk about it. Don't prove it. You don't show our statistics of where the jobs have been created. Prove it. And unfortunately, he's checked out. The president has checked yeah, out? he's checked out. Why do you make that conclusion? Why should Galamse still be going on? Why? Look, Galamse took effect, real effect, from 2017 to date. All the chemicals, the water bodies, it happened in his tenure. Do you know how many licenses were given? 332 mining licenses were given, including in forest areas. You know how much it's going to cost eh, to clean the waters? $126.5 billion as of 2023. Do we have the money? Hence, the water, uh, what do you call it? Water people are telling us. Ghana water. Yes, are telling Tidy us. BT levels. Look. Up to the roof. You know something? The partisanship of our politics has created a situation where we can't bring the country first. Because Galamse is a what? It's a national crisis. And the president, irrespective of forming these institutions that haven't been able to get anywhere, should have treated it as a national uh, 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 problem. You saw Enoch. He was dancing around, saying he was landing. Land. He you cannot, cannot say so he, of your co panel He cannot speak. What do you mean by he was wait, dancing wait, around? Wait, <laughs> He cannot speak to the issue because they are all scared of Akufuado. They are scared of Akufuado. They are scared to tell him, oh boy, we are going the wrong way. We are going the wrong way. Let's realign. What one thing President Akufuado could have done eh, when he came and he saw this thing was to call to have a national discussion with the objective of all of us need to stick to a particular line so that in case eh, there's a change of government, that line still is followed. Did he do it? Did he do it? Was he able to do it? And what even... What even 
kills my heart. Two things. When he said, I'm putting my presidency on the job, was it a literal meaning? Was it a political meaning? Or it was a fanciful meaning? What did he mean by And if I were to meet President Akufuado today, eh, that is the only question I'll ask him. That Mr. President, what did you mean by putting your presidency on the line for Galamsi? What did you mean by that? And now, look at where we are. When this Galamsi thing started, what did we all say? Ghana will be importing water soon. Ghana will be importing water soon. And you know the impact of the water people not being able to treat water. Do you know the impact? You would not even be able to flush your toilet. Because there will be no water. Today, eh, in our homes, the water goes off four days, no water. And you know its impact. I don't understand why President Kufuadu couldn't have said, look guys, Galamse is the beginning and end of Ghana. And it is the beginning and end of Ghana. Huh? It is the beginning and end of Ghana. So, we are going to put in a policy, eh? a policy of shoot to kill. Shoot to kill. We are going to ban small-scale mining for the next 10 years. That's what we should do? Yes. Ah, the, those doing Galamsey, don't they have... Uh, 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 Lines in line, small-scale? No, 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 no. Don't they have people protecting them with bazookas and all sorts of... Uh, uh, what do you call it? And then you now go to... You now see all the foreigners. And this is what makes it a, a, a war crime. Foreigners in our land destroying our land. Eh? You now go to your embassies and you ask your ambassadors in those uh, uh, embassies where the nationals are here and find out how do you give visas to nationals coming to this country. What is the criteria you You mean use? the Chinese and in all China, that? All those who are foreigners who are practicing Galamse here. How do you do it? And if they are culpable, what do you do? You sack them. Unfortunately... The president has checked out. The members have checked out. Have you heard President, uh, 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 Vice President Baumia talk about Galamsey? How he's going to do it? <laughs> no. Y yes, uh, there are policies. So uh, we'll uh, turn to and, that. And, and, Please and, wrap up and, for and me. I'll wrap up. My, my last concern. Yesterday, yesterday, Parliament called emergency meeting. Huh? That emergency meeting was to do what? Huh? To decide who gets one home, one home. Eh? Was that what it was about? If they had called emergency meeting for Galamse, would not that have been a good idea? One home, one home. How you put sirens on people's cars. That was most interesting to them. Well, how does that make parliament an effective body? How? And the people say, we don't want this one home, one home. And you go and sit and you want to bring it back when Galamse is killing this country. Oh. Ah, okay. Let's all sit. If now what? It will, let me finish, Roland. It will get to a point where eh, we won't even be able to tap into water from Cote d'Ivoire mm. and Benin because mm. our waters would have depleted and spoiled their rivers too. So let's go on. Well, on page five of this Professor Frimpon Boateng report states or outlines the members of this interministerial committee. So we have for environment, the ministry, lands ministry, local government, there's chief tenancy, there's regional reorganization and development, there's monitoring and evaluation, water and sanitation, interior, defense, information. Then they have the secretariat, which also has a, a secretary, so to speak. If this big plan to remedy the Galamse menace or situation didn't work, which manifesto promise from the government will work? Yeah, Roland, thank you. I am completely amazed as to the kind of words that have been used on this platform against President Akufo-Addo's personality by um, Mr. Philemon Lai, calling them, uh, saying that President Akufo-Addo is, 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 is a die in the woo, uh, he's, he's uh, die in the woo in the criminal cabal. You, you tried pointing it out to him, but he still insisted and made his point. Again, 
for, uh, for lack of respect for the president, he called this a coup for this a coup and this kind of word should not be coming from a young person as he is. We are discussing a national matter, and this national matter should be discussed a political. I believe when of our speaking, of our was speaking, he mentioned that it's a war, and once we go to war, we are going to war. We go we go to war in unison, not in a disjointed manner. Certainly, President Akufuado as the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces and the trustee, because uh, per the mine and minerals assessing one of the mine and minerals out of Ghana, uh, to, uh, 703 of 2006 as amended, grants the trusteeship of our natural resources to the president. That he 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 holds that in trust for the people of this country, and the constitution has granted same to him. I believe that for what he has done, he's been able to discharge this the, this duty. Although we are not seeing the end game of this. Uh, this, whole, this whole enterprise. I believe the, the, the sequence of my narration as to the fight against illegal mining from the, the, from the 1980s up to uh, the, uh, 2024 as we sit here resonates with all of us. That all governments have made efforts to be able to win this minute and nip it in the back, but has clearly been unsuccessful in this enterprise. Because it's a livelihood matter, because it's an environmental matter, and because it has a social connotation to this minute. Roland, going forward, the MPP led by Dr. Bamboud Baomia has mm. seen um, uh, where we need to go as a country as far as mining is concerned. Once mining has become part of us and it's living with us, certainly some measures need to be put in place to be able to um, remedy the situation and be able to um, uh, deliver the wealth in mining and create jobs for the people of this country whilst we protect our environment. Mm. Dr. Baomia is saying that it is because the people of this country who are into mining lack the capital adequacy to be able to invest well and to be able to mine sustainably. That is the reason why uh, um, they are trying this uh, try and error sort of mining, depleting our lands and destroying our water bodies. The, the Kufuado administration, through the, uh, the, the mining, the multilateral mine integrated program, trained local miners. Akufuado and Baumia government made sure that we put the security in charge of the fight against illegal mining. The Kufuado Baumia government procured speedboats, has decentralized the, uh, the Minerals Commission of Ghana, and hitherto areas within this country mining the speedboats too were procured. Yes, speedboats were procured to patrol the so, water. So boats. are they patrolling now? We can ask the we can ask the security we can ask the security agencies as to whether they are patrolling or not. Because the naval the, 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 the navy were in charge of patrolling the Ancobra Ophi and the uh, and the tunnel basins and the likes. And when, they, when those patrols were ongoing, we could see the, the rivers regenerating. Oh. I believe before, before the boycott of this platform by the New Patriotic Party, I came here and I pointed to you, were you here or it was now, that the Ancobra Basin, when you get to half a sini, where it enters the sea, I think that there were evidence that the water has, has started regenerating and people were seeing the real color of the Ancobra and the sea at that point. So certainly, Dr. Baumira is proposing to us that because we need capital, he's proposing a natural resource bank, which will be set up to be able to inject capital into this regard. Natural so resource bank. Natural resource bank, yes. So that the people in this sector can be able to get resources from this bank, and the bank will provide services and training to these people, make sure that they support their, uh, their, their uh, uh, operations, and at the end of the day, the gold that they get, they can also sell to PMMC and the Bank of Ghana for the gold purchase program and the gold for oil, gold for reserve program that the Bank of Ghana is running. Similarly, Dr. Baumia is telling us that he will also further continue the decentralization exercise that has started by the Kufuado administration as far as the Minerals Commission and its operations are concerned so that we can get more of an environmental and mining inspectorate within the various mining districts to be able to police and enhance. Again, on the issue of land reclamation, this will be handed over to the district assemblies to be able to also support in reclamation efforts of the various mine out areas so that at the end of the day, the mine out areas will be reclaimed um, uh, cash crops will be, will, will be planted, such as uh, oil palm, cocoa, and the likes will be planted to be able to regenerate these lands and make sure that the people of Ghana uh, take benefit out of it. You know, Akufuado launched launch the planting for export and rural development. And some of these reclaimed lands could be used in, in, in furtherance of this uh, policy and be able to project our country for the various exports and industrialization drive that we are yearning for. Again, when you look at the mining belts of Ghana, it is few mining belts that have been identified. And out of these few mining belts have been saturated. Most of these mining belts have been taken over by large-scale commercial gold mining. Anglo Gold, Asante Gold, Fields Limited, and the likes have taken large trust of these mining concessions with the local uh, uh, artisanal and small-scale miners not getting enough of these uh, viable lands to be able to mine. Dr. Baumia is proposing to us that 
uh, his government, when voted for, we invest massively into the geological survey of Ghana so that we conduct more research and more, uh, more, more geological surveys in Ghana to identify more gold belts so that the viable ones will be given out to the small scale mining uh, uh, individuals who are interested in it to be able to mine sustainably with capital adequate capital injected into their operations where they will be guided to be able to mine and that takes sustainable mining, protect our environment, and the, the forest cover, our water bodies should be cordoned strictly as red zone areas where people will not be allowed to go into this menace. I believe that whilst we have used securitization, military operations, police operations, going back and forth, spending the nation's money into these operations and not yielding the needed results that we are getting, then I believe that we need to regularize and rationalize the operations of this with this major boost to be able to encourage and enhance the people of this country. If we decide to use politics to be able to say, oh, it is this government, it is a Kufuado, resign, you've broken your oath of office where no, no oath of office has been broken, and decide to see it as an economic and an environmental menace and crisis that needs to be solved in a judicious manner, then we are all heading in doom. But I believe that once the people of Ghana buy into Dr. Baumia's policies of retooling and re-encouraging and making sure that we inject capital into this into this enterprise to deliver the necessary work that it needs to deliver. I believe that the issue of illegal mining, mm. the issue of uh, environmental degradation, and the issue of pollution of our natural res uh, our water bodies and our forest reserves mm. will be a thing of the past. Okay, lawyer Apia Dankwa, we bought drones. Now I'm hearing there are even speed boats. Yeah, sure, speed boats. Did, were did, and and then so the drones were supposed to make up for aerial monitoring, etc. Then um, we were able to send security personnel there. These enforcement measures didn't work. And he's saying that the vice president will continue with the president's measures uh, uh, listen, and then add more Nanado, so that they decentralize. Nanado and MPP, see, they are about doing something to represent something. No commitment. How, ah. sir? You can make those conclusions. Ah. Uh, they are doing something to represent something. Going forward, how do we deal ah. with this? Per the report, it says that, listen, the people who have engaged in Galamse, the reason why they failed is all the, the MPP. The top chiefs, brass. The, the, some of the ministers, some of the MPs. Are the ones doing the Galamse? You understand? The, you see, the Galamse problem is one of leadership. And the, 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 the solution starts with uh, choosing the right leader. Because, uh, listen, listen, we have all the laws. One, Galamse is very from small scale mining. We should, we, see, we should be clear on this. Galamse, we should distinguish it. Yeah, it's different from small scale mining. You understand? We have all the laws, we have all the regimes. It's talking about this central. We have the strict, uh, uh, what's called. So the, the already paid the structures, it is it, it, already decentralized. Just enforce the law, apply leadership. That's all. Nanado failed because he's not a leader. He put his party before his country, and he couldn't look in the face of his party politics who were the perpetrators of Galamse and stop them. You and think people should have been prosecuted? Of course, you should stop them. He's the president and the people in the Galamse are from his party. Because, so if you're unable to touch the people in your party, how can you touch the non-party people who are also uh, 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 involved in Galamse? And that's what I'm saying, that the way forward, the way forward is leadership. And clearly, are you going to trust this cabal, this party, who are so parochial in nature, who have consistently put their party ahead of their country, where they've chosen Dr. Bamia to perpetrate that parochial No, culture. you can't say that. You, you, uh, I, I said parochial. Well, what is wrong? If I have my view, he's parochial. He said, I, I can't say that. I'm saying that he's parochial. That the party is parochial. He said, I, I can't say that. They are parochial. You, you, you understand? Are, are the people of Ghana going to trust these people who have supervised the wanton destruction of our country, our environment, through Ghana say, I'm going to trust them because of Dr. Bamia since I'm nice. What does your manifesto say, the GTP? You understand? One is simple. We are going to enforce the law. It's, it's just one of leadership. It's just one of enforcement. You yourself don't be involved in Galamse. Don't allow your people to be involved in Galamse. Enforce the laws. Our laws are there. And that's it. I've always wondered why they, why they did not felt that he needed to create parallel institutions when the constitution itself mandated parliament to create institutions to enable the president undertake or discharge his duty as a trust. Like We have Minerals Commission. They have structures. One of the problems is that Minerals Commission is weak. Why don't you just transcend that institution, Minerals Commission? Why do you create parallel institution? You, you, you understand? When you, when you go and mine illegally, it is stealing. Uh, 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 what's called? Why don't you enforce your police? The prosecutorial powers. Yeah, because I'm saying I'm saying it's stealing. And two, we all agree that it is also born out of an economic uh, what's called situation, lack of likelihood. You, the government, when you came, 
you didn't use your power of fiscal policy to empower Ghanaians to create jobs and to enhance people's livelihoods. Even in supporting them in terms of the small scale mining, you have ATS, you didn't do anything to support the small scale miners. We are saying when we come, for those of the miners who have been given, who have licenses, eh, we are going to support them. All right, we have a comprehensive program that will support SMEs, that will create jobs. But most importantly, directly, Roland, just enforce the law. It's about leadership. Just enforce the law. When, so if I, and I, I, I engage in Galamsey, I expect uh, uh, Alan Chimati to prosecute me. Prosecute the people who are close to you, who are enforcing Galamsey. Just that alone will solve the problem 80%. And then uh, you saw Dr. Bamla will do what? Ghanaians don't trust these people, this Kaba, who, are, who don't care about the country, who consistently what, what, have placed, have, I, I said Kaba, and I said they are parochia. That's my opinion. It's not defamatory. You understand? It's not, I'm not insulting anybody. But they are parochia. They've consistently put their party ahead of their country. I'm saying that come 2024, the day of reckoning, behind, be, be, beyond we sacking them, there must be a day of reckoning. We must set a precedent. We must make leadership, political leadership, understand. Because my brother kept on saying that it's not politics. It is politics. Uh, the powers we give, we give to the president are political powers. There's a name between politics and partisanship. We've given political powers to solve political problems. And he slept. So it's politics. And so in 27 December, we are going to make a political decision again to choose who we put those political powers into. But beyond we sacking them, we must, as a people, we must have a day of reckoning where people's head must be on the chopping board. Yes. Where we send a signal loud and clear that where we've given political powers pu pu to you and you've used those powers in a manner that are adverse and collective interests, then you shouldn't go scot free. And not just them, anybody who enabled them, anybody of influence who could have stopped this but kept quiet eh? because of what they were getting personally. All of them, their head must be on the chopping board. We must save this country and we must create a system which will not enable non-leaders, which will not enable charlatans to, to, uh, to, uh, to lead us and lead us into doom. Um, well, um, lawyer, I thought I said your words were strong. So oh, I thought strong. Be, what, 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 parochia, what is wrong about parochia? Let me address my brother very no, now, Yes, I'm addressing Paul, uh, lawyer Fokka. No, 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 please. Let, let's, not, very let's not use despicable and no, then also no, no, unsavory no, no, language. Roland, Roland, Roland. Nothing I said was unsavory. Can Akufado apologize to the children with cleft lips? Can Akufado apologize to those that have died at the hospital because of kidney problems? Can Akufado apologize to the market woman? Can't you Today, say President Akufado? Akufado, I mean, like, President Akufado, whatever the name is. The days for semantics are over. The name, man has inflicted title, on Ghanaians. His title precedes Roland, the Roland, name. Roland, the man has inflicted on Ghanaians the worst form of suffering ever. And today you are concerned about titles? A man that has presided over this suffering we are suffering in this country, a man whose regime has led to the death of thousands. That is why President Mahama comes with Mahama case. Because issues of kidney, issues of uh, dye cancer, serious medical issues, there's a fund that will be instituted by President Mahama to take care of people like that. So it will no more be the case that you have an Akufuadu and people are dying because of kidney issues. How, how do on, the issue of Galamse, on the issue of Galamse, you see, there's a specific example of the MPP parliamentary candidate for dropping. MPP, parliamentary candidate for dropping. What did he do to you? He has 15, 15. He's involved in 15 mining companies who are mining in forest reserves by the report of the fourth estate. By the report of the fourth estate. Nana Santehene commissioned the BNI. Nana Santehene did not act out of a vacuum. He commissioned the BNI to get all of his chiefs that were involved in Galamsi before he acted. So I tell him that Nana Santehene would be wise enough to do this. And we have a president and a vice president, Alaj Bahamia, who are not as wise, who are not as wise to commission the BNI to also pick out those that are involved in all of this. We would have expected them to do that. So fundamentally, Akufadu, you have failed. Alaj Bahamia, you have failed in this regard. The people of this country are looking you in the face on December 7th. And we'll tell you, you are out. The NDC has promised that there will be Operation Recover All Loot. Part of that includes those that have depleted the environment and have become rich overnight at the expense of the mass of our people. We shall recover all the loot. We shall vote out the MPP. We shall vote out Alaji Baumia. And we shall vote out to a large extent all the companies. What we done MPP for Galamse? So people will be prosecuted. Of course. That's, that's number again. one. The NDC is also promising that we are going to diversify the Minerals Commission to the various districts. That way they can enforce directly. Lawyer Pia Danko. Will you empower emphatic. them to of enforce that? Exactly. That's the point. That's the point. President Mahama has the credibility. He has a record of someone who enforces. 
his own appointee. He commissioned his own attorney general to prosecute Abu Gapele. That is a record of President Mahama. That is a commitment to integrity. That is credibility. Can Alaji Bome say that about himself? Can Akufuado say that about himself? They have no record of commissioning their attorney general to prosecute crime by members of their own government. But President Mahama has done that before. And we are committed to ensuring that the Minerals Commission at the various local levels are able to enforce the law. But make no mistake, we fundamentally are not saying mining is bad. To the young people of this country who, res who, 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 who dwell on mining as a means of economic survival, we shall help you to mine sustainably. We shall help you to mine sustainably. It should not be the case that only politically exposed persons, MPP people, are the ones that should benefit from mining at the expense of the young people of this country who have been left unemployed. Left unemployed at the mercy of a failed economy. Aboso can't spare part dealers. Don't, they can't even export, import because of the exchange rates. Tell Alaj Baumia, we know better now. We know better. Enough of all this. Failed economic lectures. He has failed the people of this country, and we. And you think that's a panacea? Out. That's a panacea. It's one of the ways so, we would handle so, it. So, so, so uh, Jantua, there's a video where even just last week or two in Konongo, just by the roadside, a permit <coughs> had been taken to go and do some feasibility studies. Then they started digging. Apparently, they were mining, and people drive there because the residents told us concretely, big men and women they drive there, not only stationed in the municipality. They drive there to funerals on weekends. They see it all the time. They are scooping, they are washing, they are doing everything. Galamse. And nobody did anything until our reporter went there, reviewed this, before they did some wishy-washy thing and said, oh, we're stopping it. We didn't know. We're, we're looking the thing in the face and doing nothing. How do we make sure that we take the bull by the horn? Prosecutorial powers that need to be enforced by the institution. Those institutions should be strengthened going to make sure we do the monitoring real time and stop the people, despite all the threat of having guns, etc. at the sites. There's no police station in that area. <laughs> there is. Did they not see it happen? Mm -hmm. They saw it. What did they do? Order from above. Nothing. So how do we make sure two those ones areas President Akufuado has failed this country, taking us back into IMF and Galamse. For a president to come and tell us that his party member, Akonta Mining, is no more, what do you call it, uh, mining in forest areas. That should tell you something. You mean that action alone? That should tell you something. That a president can come and stand on a platform and mention one company that his regional, what, chair is part of, that he's no more mining there. And that is good. We should clap for him. Has he been able to prosecute Akonta mining? Has he been able to? And that tells you his commitment to it. But you see, the other thing that is challenging for me are the other institutions. Like? At this particular moment, at this present moment, that we see the challenges of Galamsey. Isn't it up to the security services to march up to Flagstaff House and tell the president to act? Head of army, head of police, uh, what do you call it, customs, immigration. They are the security services. Especially the army. They see what's going on. Can't they go to the Flagstaff House and tell President Kufuado, this Galamse thing is getting serious. Let's do something about it. Have they been able to do that? No. Secondly, secondly, the Electoral Commission, what is one of their duties? One of the duties of the Electoral Commission is to look at how parties fund themselves. No be so. Mm. Am I wrong or am I right? Uh -huh. So, don't you think we should be able to ask politicians how they fund, they, they fund their campaigns? In America, uh, the elections are going on. Every cent that is contributed to the, the election huh, is put down. And there was one uh, 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 senator who chopped public uh, uh, funds. What happened to him? He was thrown in jail. And we cannot ask politicians, how do you fund your campaign? And the Speaker of Parliament has indicated, did he not say that there are some politicians in Parliament doing what I'm saying? Did he not say it? 
and we sit and do nothing about it. So where's the commitment? Where is the commitment? If you don't have effective leadership to make sure that the right things are done, even if it is your own, where are we going? So let's continue. Eh? Let's continue. As I always say, eh? I mean, how many years have I got left? Another 40. Another 40. All this talk we are talking eh? is for the young ones who are coming. And if President Kufuadu doesn't see it fit at this 99th minute to say, okay, I've heard what all of you are saying. Let's try and do something about it. Because I haven't heard him say anything. When the water people came and, and told us that, look, in the next 8 to 10 years, Ghana would have to import water. I haven't heard him say anything. Is he committed or is not committed? Look, we all have a responsibility we all have responsibility. And you see, I, I, sometimes I don't understand Ghanaians. Last Saturday, somebody climbed. The Saturday that passed. Yes, it's Saturday that passed or the previous Saturday. The evening. Okay, evening. you're talking about somebody the bust. Somebody climbed the bust. was breaking it. People were sta Airports. standing there taking video. We couldn't go and force that person down. The big sis. So, so, so you, you ask yourself. Maybe it's the frustration in the system. Oh, frustration in the system. That's where you have to act. A national monument is being desecrated and nobody does anything about it with the police station next door. Mm. So you see that it goes through everything we do. And look, Pedro Kufuado is not concerned that we spend $300 million uh, importing onions. He's not concerned. He's not concerned. So right now, with these waters, we talk about agriculture left, agriculture right, agriculture left. Is it not destroying our agriculture? Are people not eating? Look, I have a, 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 what do you call it on my phone, where a sheep was born with two heads. Siamese, a, Siamese in, sheep? Yes, yeah, in, in, in Seri. Oh, you're talking about Ghana? Ghana! Seri, two heads from Galamse, drinking Galamse water with cyanide and all that in it. So, let's go ahead. I mean, uh, the, the president, he drinks no, bottled that's, water. That is Galamse. Huh? So he drinks bottled water. But we, we have Siamese twins and those things. So no, 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 no. Look who. I think I, 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 we in spoke that, to in, in a toxicologist yes, in that who, says that, who says that it can, it can take decades, decades before the, some of the metals that exactly. are being used. Will show itself at the sites yes, that, that are seeping that are seeping into the water. Associating something listen, listen, categorically. Listen, listen. And so, and so he also said that is why enough, enough. He also said that's why we're having the deformity. Yes, enough, enough, enough. And I have to and I have to say that I have a classmate who is a is a scientist, of course, does a lot of. He's a virologist, microbiologist, etc. And if you have about four or five years ago, they did an investigation in the Takwa, the Bogoso areas, where there were deformities and effects on people's kidneys, etc., and other organs in the body, all linked to that. Fish, we are eating. Yeah. yeah the Galamsee side, they are eating yes. the fish, yes. the bad fish. Yes. Yeah. Now, let me end And by, you ask them. Let me end by said, saying, is President Kufadu so stubborn? Is he so stubborn? You should pull that down vice, the wet you wait, are wait, using. Wait, wait. I'm asking whether he's stubborn. <laughs> stubborn is not insulting anybody. Is he stubborn? That uh, Vice President Baumia is saying what Enoch is saying. You are in power. You are not oppositional. You are in power. Are you trying to tell me that you can You mean the Vice President? Yes. You are in power. You are still in power. And you're saying, oh, when I come out, do this, when I... But you're in power. Are you trying to tell so me? So you're saying some of that he should go and force now? I, I, no, I'm saying that if Nanadu, if he's trying to tell that Nanadu is stupid, that's why he won't listen to him. That's why he's putting in his vision. You are vice president today. You are not opposition leader. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> You're vice so, president so, so, so today. If some of the things you put in there are, is going to help Galam say, tell your, 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 your president mm. that, Mr. President, this and this and this is what I feel we should do. Okay. I've put it inside my vision, but I think if we can start it now, it would help. You should tell him now. Has he told him? And if he has told him, he should tell us the response All that right. he gave him. I have Prince Henry Kofodia. He says that... Please tell Lawyer Jantua that the president, Nanadu Dankufo, won't listen to him all because party here, Sika. <laughs> what did we first hear? Okay, from that audio. 
And then um, we have more comments coming through. So this one also, it's coming from um, Zach. Okay, and then uh, another one from Master Planner Junior Kintampo. Kidney issues didn't start under this government, but this government has taken steps to include kidney treatment on the NHIS list. But that isn't the solution. Uh, Philemon and his NDC couldn't do anything to these kidney patients. Okay, that's Zach. So we have others as well. Then, um, okay, so we have more comments subsequently as well. So this one also is coming from uh, Landlord Boga D-Line. With regards to um, the government's fight against Galamsey, the less said about them, the better. Ghana is at a crossroads, and the agenda to reset Ghana is on. Then, Kofi uh, Kwatingam um, you guys should play the video of the president when he said he was putting his presidency on the line. Let us look at his demeanor and then gauge it against his demeanor today. Osai Boating in Inshaeso says, the president tried his best, but you can clearly see that he had some difficulties. What he didn't do was to try and stamp his authority and prosecute um, his appointees. And then Fortune, Arnett, says, according to the report, $40 million worth of gold is repatriated from Ghana every month. So our president, it could be said to be the, ben uh, the biggest beneficiary of the menace. According to the Japadia documents, they created 350 Galamse companies, and um, they all failed to make sure that um, they really resolve the issues. Now, Dr. Segbefia says, you ask how Mr. Fakwa feels about the pollution of our water bodies, and he goes telling us the campaign itinerary of Baumia and giving us greetings from the president. Did he meet the president on his way to the studio? <laughs> well, he's, he also wants to rate, I guess, uh, rate, rate what the issues are, and then also try to say all the things as we have them. All right. So let me just give a minute to you. Let's quickly, or, or 30 seconds. Um, going forward, what should be the expectation? Can't we implement some of the things now that the Dr. Baumia wants to do? No. Uh, uh, yeah. Because now this, the, we're in a crisis. Uh, yeah, 30 so, seconds. Sure, certainly. I have mentioned that the decentralization of the Minerals Commission, the regional offices within the, 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 the 15 mining regions are Right ongoing. now, the waters are polluted. What do we do? It's an these, are, these, are, these, these, are, these, are, these are works ongoing. And certainly, once government has initiated, and it, it is part of the multilateral uh, mining integrated project where miners were trained, um, the minerals commission offices were made to be decentralized. New, uh, more officers employed to be able to manage this, uh, 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 this mineral resource that we have, and a whole lot of things that this government is doing. The NPP government, the miners should understand, is not against Galamsey, but the M MPP government is against mining irresponsibly. So certainly, once we have identified the, the, the real cause of it, we are going to invest in geological survey to be able to identify more gold belts, to be able to uh, get viable land for them. Uh, How do we resolve the current crisis? That, that, that links certainly, to the current, certainly, certainly the, the speed current patrol propositions. Boats, the speed patrol boats that were procured, if they are no more patrolling the, 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 the rivers, they should, they should intensify action. Do you think they are patrolling the rivers? The rivers? Certainly, if, if they are, Says you will not see, will not see right. how, how, how the turbidity levels are rising. Because of the, to, 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 the, the, the local dredges, those who have uh, uh, developed okay. local dredging machines and sitting on the river bodies this one, are the ones polluting the rivers. This one, and this one is from Tebi. Tebi, good morning. Name, what's up? Mm -hmm. Even in Kolebu, uh, nurses and doctors fly. Water flows once a week, sometimes two weeks. How bad can this get? Someone who has to bath water to go to work to take care of people can't find water to bath. I don't get this, Roland, he says. <laughs> TV, Mr. TV, what's up? Our government has invested so much, much in, 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 in... Okay, in, this one also is in, coming in the from um, Sonny. This. So Sonny, is anybody who is talking yes. and yeah, making... Yeah, yes, no flavor. Yeah, I don't get what I'm He says, Roland, let me make this clear. Anybody who is talking and making... Eh, 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 eh. It's not saying the truth. Don't say that. All right, so gentlemen, thank you very much. No, unfortunately, my... One last thing. Mr. is on record to have said that he's going to retire in Chibi. Remember, the Chibi water system was fixed by President Mahama. So you, Akufadu, you are going to retire at the place where water... Let me read this. Philip La, lawyer Philip La. Step into the world of Dewa. 5.39. For your chance to win big.
big with Dewa Direct and Dewa. Sure that you dial the shock will star 446 hash you pick the range of the numbers 1 to 39 you get to win big and it is 20 times your stake 40 times and 400 times and you win cash every evening at 7 p.m and also on sundays at 6 p.m now early bets love they watch chop money at 10 a.m and so you get to find out all you need to do is to choose the range of the numbers 1 to 39 and also um you also get to win big and for all the things that you have to do, please make sure that you go online and also play this. Dewa-NLA.com, always available for you. And just in case you want some customer information, 055 is available for you. Carl Domenio, North Carolina, United States of America, watching us live, says, tell him to stop defending criminality and terrorism. Look, things are getting bad and we need to be sincere as a people but he also says uh, some solutions are preferred cow <laughs> we're taking a break thank you all gentlemen for coming by people say you need to extend the time. we need to